today I'm going to help you tap into something if you want, uh, and we're going to write a poem. I have to have to do my disclaimer. <clears throat> this isn't actually a course on how to write a poem. It's a metaphor for organizing a safe way to express yourself. But yes, we will be writing a poem completely optional, of course. Um, let's say, <clears throat> I think the best way to start would actually just be to give you an example. So <clears throat> here we go. The legacy of a sinner, my favorite thing to remember. Trying to prove I was ice, my shoulders cold as the winter. See, as a young black male, you won't make it to 21 in slums if you're friendly, and this is just the beginning. I was trapped in a world that I knew nothing about. Ghetto was bad as the prison. Like, can you please let us out? And I was scared of the AIDS gangs and police race that they would throw in my face because this was life every day. And I just wanted to escape. I played video games as a means of escape until they broke in my place. And I knew the dudes that did it. It was a slap in the face. Because when they all were hungry, my mother made them a plate. But I won't say no names. I'll call you snake a disgrace. But that's a whole nother case. There's no respect for a fake. I'm kind hearted dodging kind artists. I don't like that take. One night I sat on my floor and cried. I wanted to pray, but I didn't know what to say. I had a heart full of hate. Thought of my mother's gun in the closet. Could have set all of it straight. Plus I'm in hell in any way. Seven bullets should do it, but I'm too good for a case. If shell cases get found, then I get sent upstate to look the judge in his face, but on the floor of his court, the middle finger to all of them as I walk through the gate. The left side of my brain tells the right to calm down. I need to switch up the pace. Sometimes I feel like I'm so ahead of my time that I must be late. If all of this is real, then I must be fake. If everybody love, why I just see hate? Kanye said the good life ain't even all that great. I fall back and spring forward like I'm losing the album remaining in power. Wise guys on my squad like we all attended school at Howard. I lost my innocence. This game will deflower you if you let it. Wait, I'm a real good dude with a little bad credit. Still go to the mall and probably swipe the debit. Don't we all want to live this way? Never give and take. Only give. Everything's okay. I relocate when my neighbors start complaining. Throw some money in the safe and say today when it's raining. But when all I want to do is show the fruits of my training, this world says, screw you and the wound that you came in. I've dealt with depression and anger. As the world got stranger and stranger, it's dangerous. But yet and still, I put prayer hands together and send a page up to an angel. Pages for angels. Yeah. Um. So very moody piece, very kind of almost viscerally in your face. I try not to get too into stuff, make it too weird. But um, the idea was I was in an area I wasn't super proud of and I was doing my best. And no matter what I did, it always felt like it was one problem after the next or one setback after another. And all I wanted to do was be innocent, but I was placed in a scenario where innocence really kind of makes you a target. Um, it wasn't a very long phase in my life, but nonetheless, it was a phase and it was strong enough for me to write about it. I use my pen as therapy to help me. I kind of coach myself through these things because a lot of the time people don't teach you how to deal with traumatic experience, uh, complex PTSD. People have things that they need to deal with and don't know how. Um, a lot of people are just coping the best ways they know how. I found my coping mechanism in poetry. So <clears throat> let's say I'm your poetry teacher, right? Or I'm your English teacher. And one day after class, you're like, Mr. Simpson, Mr. Simpson, can you teach me how to write a poem or help me write a poem? The first question I would ask you um, is what's the mood? Uh, there's three core questions I would ask. The first being, what's the mood? Is it a tense piece? Is it peaceful and happy? Is it melancholic? What are we supposed to feel when you put us in wherever you're about to put us? Um, here's an example. <clears throat> I love the feeling of feeling love. If I were to start a poem with, I love the feeling of feeling love. It, 
by default, it kind of clearly establishes a joyous mood that glorifies love, right? If you start with a mood, it'll help you paint the scenario. It'll help you lay out the atmosphere. It'll give you direction on your role in the piece and what you'll be doing in said piece. Um, if it's an angry poem, a poem about heartbreak, you're probably going to be stomping around mad, uh, feeling this way, your heart may be beating this fast, your head may be spinning or something like that. Is it a detailed recollection of a really good day? Like what is the mood? Where are we going when we listen to this piece, All right? So the first question I would ask is, what's the mood? Um, you know what, let's let's stick with the I, um, I love the feeling of feeling love. That will be our mood for right now. Uh, joyous, uh, love, glorification, happy, rapturous mood, right? After that, I would ask, who are you expressing? Because a poem can work a few ways. Once you've established your mood, you should figure out who you are. Are you playing yourself in this poem? Are you embodying your own role? Like you're just being yourself? Are you being a more subdued, quieter, more passive side of yourself? Are you being boisterous, loud, and angry? Um, who are you trying to express with this piece? What are you trying to get across? Um, what's the mood and who are you? <laughs> you don't have to be yourself when you write. Uh, one thing I cannot go without mentioning. If you're going to write a piece, you can literally be anything. You can be a, uh, you can be yourself. You can be your friend. You can approach a poem from a friend's perspective, an elder's perspective. You can be a tree, a slice of pie on a table. You can be a dead president. Um, you can be whatever, but you need to know who you are when you're doing this piece, right? You have to know your role in the piece. So what's the mood? Who are you expressing? Who are you, right? Um, if we wanted to dive deeper into that, we could say, what does expression of that role look like to you? Uh, if poetry comes in many different forms. Is it is your form of expression in the form of a haiku? Uh, is it a direct quote? Is it a extended metaphor? Is it a series of biblical allegories? Like how... How will you express this role that you have basically agreed to play as the writer, as the, if the subject of your piece? I'm going to try to keep it simple. What's the mood? Who are you expressing? Who does that, what does that look like to you? What does expression of that person look like to you, right? Um, from those three questions, what's the mood, who are you, and what are you expressing? Um, or what does that expression look like? We can basically build about 60% of our, our piece. We can lay the foundation, we can lay the groundwork for it. Um, let me see. So the line, I love the feeling of feeling love. This is gonna be our, our, our starting line, right? If we run I love the feeling of feeling love through our, our chain of questions, our three core questions, we would say, <clears throat> what's the mood? We have a happy love mood established as of now. Who or what am I, right? Um, as I experience this joyous love. And I thought about this for a couple hours earlier today. And I decided just for, just to be poetic, I want to be a tree. So as of now, <laughs> we have the happy love mood established and I am a tree. I am a tree that is in a happy love mood, right? Just bear with me. The third question, <clears throat> what, uh, what does the expression of this role look like? Uh, as of now, it's peaceful and lovey-dovey. Will it be the same at the end of this piece? Who knows? Let's find out. Um, I will say I am a tree in a park across the street from where you live, right? Um, I personally like to make stuff rhyme. I try to do internal rhymes and all these other things because I feel like 
if it's phonetically on point, then it'll stick with people a bit more. It'll resonate a bit more. So we've got our three core questions out of the way. I am a happy, loving tree in a park across the street from where you live. As of now, I'm peaceful. I think, let's try this, let's try this. Um, to elaborate off of the first line, because I like to rhyme and all this other good jazz. Let's say the first line is, I love the feeling of feeling love. Second line would be, when it's done right, it feels like raindrops from the clouds up above. I am a happy tree <laughs> experiencing love. It feels like rain to me. I will say, let me see. I want to change that. So this is what I have so far. <clears throat> I love the feeling of love. When it's done right, it feels like raindrops from the clouds up above, of which I adore the euphoria of. Now, we're still building on that happy-go-lucky kind of mood, like, yay. And it's slightly goofy because I'm a tree. Um, the thing about poetry, at any given time, it can take a turn. It can take a completely different direction. Uh, but like I said, as long as you know who you're trying to express and what you're trying to get to, uh, what you're trying to get the crowd to feel, you can you can work with subversion. You can do all of these other things, but you have to establish your course. What's the mood? Who are you expressing? What does that expression look like, right? So let's say... I'm a tree that has experienced love before, and I'm super happy when I experience love. However, me living in the park across the street from you, I notice that you don't come and see me as much. So suddenly, there's this kind of eerie air around the love that I have, right? Because I'm noticing I'm not getting that that love anymore. Um, you're not coming and invested in me like you used to. So if I were to elaborate on that, I would say, I love it when we hang out and you come and sit around my roots and tell me about your day and express your inner truth. Yeah. So we are fleshing out what is a actual scenario, an atmosphere, a kind of life for our character which is just me as a tree across the street from you and as of now this tree that lives across the street from you has established that it enjoys love it enjoys the love that you give to the tree me being the tree um i the tree love when you tell me about your day and come and hang out with me however you haven't done it in a while so our happy-go-lucky poem is slowly taking a darker turn and that's okay let's see how it goes um i would say my next pointer i prefer to use real life experiences um take like a simple argument with a friend and i could say i'm mustard in your ketchup and just write a whole perspective like that um I think, I think, uh, what is it? Art imitates life. Um, when you pull from actual experiences, it makes it easier for you to kind of lock in and hone in on what you're going for. Um, and it helps you paint a better piece. Everything is about painting a better piece. How descriptive is it? How much does it make you feel a thing? Can you visualize where I'm coming from? Can you see me as a tree? Um, with that, we're gonna pull from a real life experience. Um, I vividly remember moving to a new city and leaving the old city that I had spent most of my life in and arriving in this new town and feeling completely alone and isolated. Um, and it took me a while to make some friends because I didn't really know how, it was my first time moving, right? 
So if I wanted to incorporate that feeling into this piece, just to kind of subvert the old, the happy, happy-go-lucky mood, right? You would curve the energy of the piece, but it still has direction and drive pushing it forward. Um, I would say something like, I love the feeling of love. When it's done right, it feels like raindrops from the clouds up above, of which I adore the euphoria of. I love it when we hang out and you come and sit around my roots and tell me all about your day and express your inner truth. Now let's take that energy and curve it into a more dramatic direction. One day I saw you running with a distraught face, unbecoming of someone I thought was coming to see me, but you kept going. But then you didn't visit. And at first I didn't get it, but maybe there was something else that wasn't visible from here. So suddenly our piece takes a bit of a, um, a kind of, what's the best way to describe it? I don't think it's melancholic but it takes a, a more moody kind of turn. It goes from, oh, happy, 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 to, oh no, what, what, what did I do? What did I, what are, what are the questions now? What did, what, what did I do? <laughs> um, one day I saw you running with a distraught face, unbecoming of someone I thought was coming to see me, but you kept going. But then you didn't visit. And at first I didn't get it, but maybe there was something else that wasn't visible from here. We could build this into a comeback piece. We could build it back up into a love mode, or we could drag it all the way down and make it one of the saddest pieces ever. The tree could get chopped down. Uh, you could move away like I did. Anything could happen at this point. But at this moment, we have happy love, choice, expression of love. And then a sudden feeling of isolation or a little loneliness. Um, and these are two good elements to work off of, happy and sad. Um, hmm. I think, do I have time? I got 10 minutes. All right, we could, I want to do it live. I don't know how many people are in here. Is it okay if... Uh, I asked like two good questions to help me finish out this piece. Of course. Okay. Would you want to go <laughs> into a more Disney like direction? Because I could totally see this being like a Disney kind of piece. You know, Disney will take anything and just make it a thing from Ratatouille to, I don't know, any kind of expression. Or should we keep it sad and dramatic? If you had to choose, would you go happy-go-lucky or sad and dramatic? Uh, Meredith, have you got a preference? It, it's hard. Um, I'm really enjoying seeing this poem emerge. Tommy, thank you. Oh, um, for my mood, it's morning here in Melbourne, so I've got to go into the day. So for my mood to take on the day, I'd go Disney. Mm -hmm. But I think sad and dramatic would make for the better poem. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed the dramatic turn you took with it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm a tree living in a park across the street from where you live, and you haven't come to visit me in quite some time. Uh, realistically, I would, if I was the student writing this piece, I would figure out what made you go away. Why haven't you come to see me? I feel like it could be a happy moment. Maybe you went off to do something that makes you happy and then you're going to bring back new stories. And I get to see you again and you get to tell me new truths and sit around my roots. Um, if I was going to go the dramatic way, I would say maybe I saw you in a moving van and you passed by and waved at me, but you didn't come and say anything. And now I'm just in the park across the street from where you used to live. Um. And again, none of it ever has to rhyme. Sometimes I just like to rhyme because it makes me feel good. <laughs> um, but it can go literally any way you want it to go. I don't want to finish the piece for you. But what I will do 
as I'll post it in the chat. And as of now, it looks like that. Um, if you get bored, feel free to add on. Or if you just want to take the format and try your own thing, go for it. If you want to be a slice of pie on a table, go for it. The idea is that this is one of the safest methods to me personally, one of the safest methods of expression. Uh, no one gets hurt. I feel way better. I feel like a weight is off my shoulders when I'm finished writing a piece or whenever I begin the act of even writing a piece, uh, just to know that I'm pushing forward and trying to do something helps me out a lot too. Um, but the world is your oyster. <laughs> um, if you can feel it, if you can articulate it, I think um, you should give it a shot. You should definitely do that. Or maybe you're one of the people that doesn't actually like poems or poetry and stuff like that. And that's cool too. But do you know what you want to express? Do you know who you're trying to express? And if you know that, can you cook, sew, sing, dance, paint, or, you know, do anything about it to help you get that out, to help you get out what you feel, what you want to express. What's the mood? Who are you expressing? And what does that look like? I'm a tree in a park and I love you. I hope you come and visit me. Um, yeah, I'll wrap it up there. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed that. Uh, it's really nice to get insight into someone's uh, creative process. And also, it's I, I, I find it really intriguing how everyone seems to have a completely different process and how you personally begin with with mood. Um, so that was that was really that was, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was it was really good. Um, and um, another thing, I guess, is just building on that point about people having different creative processes some people will just write down whatever comes to their head and then the mood will emerge from that right so anyway I Meredith I wanted to like keep it simple but yeah there's different methods of writing yeah 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 Meredith did you uh yeah um yeah great session loved it um I because I mentor people on creative process and my the people I talk to sometimes struggle with self-doubt. They put themselves down, criticise their own work, and sometimes they're on the receiving end of very negative, toxic feedback. Um, do you have any advice for how people get past um, lack of confidence? Write the worst thing. Write absolutely terrible things. And once you're like, okay, this feels like the bottom. There's only up from here. <laughs> it's Love like... It. Um, one time I got some advice when I was uh, learning to grieve. I, I had lost my grandparents and I was trying to learn to grieve. One of my mentors reached out to me and he was like, write every mad, angry, sad thought you can on a piece of paper and burn it. Like, symbolically let it go and see how you feel about it after. And for the first few days after I did it, I was like, that was stupid. I feel stupid. But the more I'd like reflected on that moment, I was like, I've let it go. Like, I didn't realize, like, I was instilling it in myself. Like, you've already let it go. You just got to walk in letting go, you know? So um, I would say just write down whatever it is horrible on a piece of paper, trash it, shred it, mark it up, throw it away, and just know that that's how it works. You can always make more stuff. You can always put out something that you like more than that trash you just threw away, you know? Yeah, I, I think that's a really... Uh interesting way of of expressing emotion and also that that brings up another point which is the difference between constructive criticism and toxic um reactions which definitely is something because i mean people will, t will talk about having friends around you who aren't yes people right and yeah. will give you constructive criticism but then the other side of that coin is that some especially envy can motivate people to be toxic in their reactions right so so true yeah give me just a second i'm typing this one thing yoko taro making weird games weird people 
Okay, so a part of the reason I write the way I write, uh, there's a video game uh, creator named Yoko Taro, and I watched one of his um his lectures. Uh, it was called "Making Weird Games for Weird People," and in this, he talks about um writing from the end to the start. And his method in particular is he knows how this story is going to start. He knows how the story is going to end. And all you have to do is stitch them however they look or however they are, uh, stitch them in the middle. And that's the story. Once I started approaching things like that, um, it also helped me kind of hone in on my own process. So say, for instance, I'm writing a song and I'm like, at the end of this song, I'm going to peel off into the night on a motorcycle in a pair of shades. So, but let's say I start like I'm at home and I'm bored and I'm a loser. So somewhere in there, I'm gonna go on the hero's journey and I'm gonna peel off into the night on a motorcycle. However, however I get there can be as wild or crazy as it wants to be, as long as it starts properly and it lands on the beat we want it to land on. Um, I'd recommend checking it out. He taught me a lot, Yoko Taro.